there. Welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friends. So glad to be with you today and hope things are going really good for you. I'm kind of excited. I get to see my son and his family tonight. And you know what that's like if you're a grandmother, or great grandmother, and you get to see the kids because they don't live near you anymore. And so hope you have some good things in store for you like that, too. I can hardly wait to see them and to hold my newest great grandbaby. Do you know what that's like? It's wonderful. Well, listen, we've got a great guest today, Bonnie Flood, and what an interesting life she has. First place, she's an artist, a professional artist, and um, I got my worst grades in art, so I, I have this boundless admiration for an artist, and she had a very famous student. We'll tell you about that later. And she also has written the book, Now Who's Going to Make My Copy? Um, this is one of the most interesting books I've had in a long time, and I think very helpful, very insightful. It's not a how-to book. It's a lot of interviews of widows and widowers who have passed on and their experience and how they handled it. And there's a lot of viewers out there that really need this book. And I'm anxious for you to meet uh, Bonnie. And I'm going to join Stephanie and get this. We're going to make strawberry bread. I've never even heard of it till I saw the recipe. And we're going to make it and it's got a whipped strawberry butter. So I think you're gonna want this uh, recipe. Uh, before I join her though, I've been offering you this. What, a, uh, what on earth am I here for? This is a condensed version of that hardback by Rick Warren who, and that book sold well over a million copies. It was so popular, it's such a wonderful book. Because that's a great question, isn't it? Why am I here? And uh, so if you didn't have that book, and most of you probably didn't, you can have it for any gift to the ministry. Just write to me at Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or use that 800 number, 1-800-229-0059 and uh, we will get it right out to you. And thank you for anything you can do. We truly, truly appreciate it. And I'm here now with Stephanie, and have this you ever heard of no. strawberry bread before? No, this is gonna be delicious. Sure smells good. And we're like in the strawberry capital of the yes, United States, so we should know this. <laughs> we should have, yes. I wonder where it came from. Okay. Okay, so you're gonna, if you wanna whip the butter, mm -hmm. okay, I have two cups of flour, a half a cup of sugar, a quarter cup of brown sugar, a half a teaspoon of salt and cinnamon, and then a teaspoon of baking soda. And I'm gonna... I always have a problem <laughs> there with go. this. There, there you go. go. <laughs> um, I'm gonna mix them all together. I put a little bit of sugar. You diced up strawberries mm -hmm. this morning so beautifully. Mm -hmm. I put just a little bit of sugar in there. I think they just want them to get the, the juiciness. Yes. Yeah, so I'm just gonna mix, whisk these, the dry ingredients up. And, and all this, all this is, is a uh, that's stick gonna, of butter? Yes, it's a stick of butter. It's two tablespoons of powdered sugar and a quarter cup of very di uh, mm -hmm. good strawberries. Strawberries. We well, you know strawberries are so Finally. big here. We have a whole festival every year. Yes, it's coming up too. I'm excited. I'm going. And they have all kinds of entertainment. I bought myself tickets to a concert for Christmas. Okay, and which one? Yes, uh, you don't know them. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't know my singers either, yeah, so we're yeah, even. No. Okay, so. Okay, I'm going to let that just kind of get out of there. And okay, I've whisked that all up. I'm going to get a mm -hmm. fork to beat the eggs with. And this is what you put on the finished product. I can't wait to try the butter. Oh, I know. I'm excited. Okay, so let me beat up these two eggs. I'm going to put oil, half a cup of oil, and a, table, a teaspoon of vanilla in. Then I'm going to mix it all together with the strawberries and put it into a sprayed loaf pan. Well, our regular viewers know that I am a tea drinker. Yes. I believe it's because my mom's British. Yes. Um, you are related to the queen somehow. I know. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I wonder if I'm in her will, you think? Mm. Uh, and so I... With my tea, I love a good quick bread. This is gonna, really good. Like this is going to be with your tea, with my coffee. This mm -hmm. is going to be my dessert. Oh. <laughs> this will be my dessert after lunch. I just had soup for lunch, so. Well, Stephanie and I are the early birds around here. So we 
kind of have, well, you have a cup of coffee before you come, right? That's the first button I push when I get up in the morning. I wander out to the kitchen and I push that button. Mm hmm Because I love it. Okay, so I'm going to mix the wet and the dry and the strawberries, okay? And then I'm going to mix it all together. Now, you bake it for an hour, and it's truly an hour. Mm hmm So don't shortcut it because you're going to be sad because the inside, the outside will look perfectly done, and then you'll cut in the middle, and it won't yeah, be Yeah, it'll be. So it's truly an hour, so... Would you turn this over and do it on the other side, or would mm -mm. you put it on the top? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, you didn't mix the strawberries in. Oh, I need you, girl. <laughs> Don't ever leave me. It's strawberry butter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember, one day, I think at Christmas time, we made flavored butters. Yes. Uh, Wanda made one, I made one, and yes. you made one, and we got a lot of requests for those. Yes, yummy. Because I always think if you are visiting someone, Yes. And they have one thing that's a little different. Mm -hmm. That's what they'll remember. They yeah. won't remember the meat that much, but yeah. they might remember a... Something that's a little different. And if you make this and you let it chill for a little while, Ooh. and like those flavors really get together. Mm -hmm. Oh. How you... What are you doing? I put it on there. <laughs> no, you slice it. And you then slice you put it, it, on, put it slice. on the slices? <laughs> <laughs> that would never have entered my mind. <laughs> But why couldn't you do it my way? I mean, you could. Sure you could. Sure, you could. It's Arthur Rupee show. She was That's, doing it uh, just fine. You know what? That was my creative side. That, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll <laughs> leave that on there. Okay, there you go. Yes. Uh -huh. I, would, <laughs> I would put a whole hunk on there. Yeah. Um, <gasps> that looks so Don't you think good. the uh, cream cheese would be good, too? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially strawberry cream cheese. Mm -hmm. That would be so good. I wouldn't even put this, the powdered sugar in that. I would just do cream cheese and strawberries. Right. Yes. Yeah. It only had two tablespoons of the powdered sugar, powdered sugar anyway, yeah. so. Okay. We're ready. There right? you go. Okay, let's taste. There's for you. Thank you. Oh, it looks I so, get a little... it looks like tomatoes, but it's not. It's strawberries. Mmm. There are no words. We are speechless. I can't even talk. It's so good. <laughs> She's having an experience. It is a 10. I know. When I saw it this recipe, I thought, I've never heard of strawberry oh, bread. It's so good. I need a cup of coffee. Okay. Hurry, go. Calm go. down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we got to let her go get her coffee. And you stay with me because you're going to love my guest today. It's going to be great. And information's coming up. If you want the recipe, choose your way to get it. Stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. All right, I'm anxious to introduce my guest to you today, and one reason is because I so, I don't know, I so admire an artist, and even somebody with really good penmanship, which I do not have. You who've received letters from me know that. And so I have a real artist here. I mean a real artist, and we're going to show you some of her pictures and then one of her students. Okay, welcome. Welcome, Thank Bonnie. I'm so glad to have you. Thank you. Yeah, good to be here. Yeah, I you want could some of that, that strawberry bread. Yes. <laughs> I told her if she's good, we'll give her a piece. Uh, Brooke, could you bring that around a little bit so she could see it? We're going to show some of your pictures, and you might want to okay. um, kind of uh, describe. I, w I would think... Uh, an artist would have to have a, have a certain bend towards something you want to paint, because um, you've painted such a uh, variety of things. And uh, do you have some kind of a filter you put things through that you want to paint? No, it's just, you know, an artist uh, looks at the sky and sees a painting, mm -hmm. or looks at a tree and sees a painting. So, you know, it's just all in the mood you're in. and. Yes, and I, I looked at some of yours, and we chose some. Do you want to tell us about um, this one that's coming up? Um, okay, that was um, uh, a photo I had taken in Spain, 
and I was so intrigued with the herdsmen and the sheep mm -hmm. and the the little barn, yeah. and that was so much fun to paint. Well, I, we've got another one coming up. I um, that one I had to have. Little that, girls dancing. That one was. Um, I don't know the girls, but it was at the beach, and they were so beautiful. And I photographed that and painted it later. That one has irises, and those don't grow in Florida, but they grew in Colorado, where I was uh, raised, right. and I've always loved that flower. Uh, that was a plain air painting, which means you paint it outside, mm -hmm. go outside and paint it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a that barn one. in North Does that Georgia. have a story? Pardon me? Does that picture have a story? I don't know who has the barn, but I just loved it so much. Uh -huh. I like barns. You I know, know I, I like the to... old. You know, and now I, we I... have a picture of one of your students. Okay. Yeah. Okay. President of the United States, no less. Right. What was that like, Bonnie? Well, that was very interesting. Uh -huh. It was really a shock that I was even asked to do that. You know, there are thousands of artists all over the country. And, and he chose you, or he... Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess I had to go through security, mm -hmm. you know, to, to be able to do that. Oh, they probably know more about I, you than I you know about you. I said they know more about me than I could even <laughs> believe. <laughs> um, well, he appears to be so likable and probably kind of funny. He's a funny guy. He's an intelligent man. He's, he's just a great, has well, a great Was he always interested in art? I don't think so. I think he, he read Winston Churchill's book. And uh, he was a great artist, mm -hmm. and I think that inspired him, and he wanted to do it. And I think anything he sets out to do, he does it well. So I've seen some of his uh, or pictures of his paintings, and I was impressed. I, I just yeah, didn't think a, he's kind really of a cowboy along, from Texas. <laughs> I think he was painting like eight hours a day, so he's gone a long way in uh -huh. his art. He's he's mm -hmm. done a good job. He's really mm -hmm. a great artist. Okay, let's talk about your book and. Uh, the website will be going up. Can they get the book through the website or? They can get it through um, Amazon, Amazon. Okay. Barnes & Noble. Okay, the regular places. The title is Now Who's Going to Make My Coffee? I understand uh, your husband passed away, what, three, four years ago? Be three years in July. And did he make your coffee? He made my coffee every morning for 31 years. Mm -hmm. To the point where when he passed away, I didn't know how to make coffee. So I bought went out and bought a new coffee pot, thinking that one, something was wrong with it. And they said, well, I don't see anything wrong, but we'll, we'll let you pick another one. So I, I ended up choosing like three coffee pots, still couldn't make coffee. <laughs> so Truth is, you didn't know how to make coffee. I didn't know, I just couldn't make my coffee. And so a friend said, Bonnie, just buy the pods, that will work for you. So that's what I do. Mm -hmm. And you are a, a very close friend to Anita Bryant. Yes. And, um, I know I admired her so much, you know, years ago when she was more in the public view, and uh, she's well, doing I talk all about right. her a lot in the book because mm -hmm. she's very special to me. You're kind of like prayer partners, or or? sisters, prayer partners. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I talk to her almost every day, mm -hmm. and um, you know, she's whenever I need to be encouraged, she'll talk to me That's and tell me for. I'm a child of God. You're mm -hmm. you're a child of God. He's <laughs> He's going to take care of you. So We all need somebody to remind us of that, don't yes. we? Yes. All right. The name of the book is Now Who's Going to Make My Coffee? And it's very insightful. And it's not a, it, it's not a, this is the way you should do this. Right. Where did you get the idea to talk to widows and widowers and how they face this greatest well, loss in their life. Well, I have to tell life. you first how I got the name, Now Who's Going to Make My Coffee. Mm -hmm. I be, Two weeks before my husband passed away, I it was a dream, I think, that woke me up. You're going to write a book, and it's going to be called Now Who's Going to Make My Coffee. And I thought, that's that's really silly, because I'm an artist. I'm not an author. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, oh, that that's just a bad dream. I'm going mm -hmm. back to sleep. But uh, several months after my husband passed away, I remembered that dream because I had become a little upset about the way that widows are treated, the way that I was being treated. I, I had a lot of um, couple friends that soon disappeared. You know, they were there for the funeral and they would call me once in a while, what can I do for you? 
and um, but then they disappeared. Mm -hmm. And I was so upset. I thought, well, maybe it's me. Uh -huh. Maybe they like sure. my husband yes. better than me. But then I started asking other widows, you know, does did this happen to you? And they said yes. And so the more I asked, they said all they all said yes. That's that happened to me. All my couple friends are gone. And so I just said, boy, if I could, I'd write a book. Mm -hmm. And I had a friend that said, well, you can. I said, can? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. You can write a book. So that's how I started writing the book. And then I started interviewing other widows and widowers. Yes, and I meant to count them, but I didn't. Do you know how many you interviewed? Oh, my goodness. There's, there's a lot. I've never counted them either. There's but I had more than I could put in the book, mm -hmm. actually. And you talked to both men and women. Men and women. Was there anything um, that kind of popped up more than other ideas? Uh, was there a thread that went through that was kind of... Well, um, of course, you know, they all had this grief they didn't know what to do with. And they, the loneliness and the, and the not only losing their husband, but being left behind by friends. You know, it just really hurt me talking to them mm -hmm. because um, I realized that there was not enough help mm -hmm. for widows mm -hmm. and widowers. Widowers don't, they just don't have that much trouble, not as much as widows. Mm -hmm. They seem to be, I call them in the book, the casserole parade because they get all the casseroles. The widowers get all the casseroles and, um, and they, they marry sooner too, mm -hmm. because there are 800,000 new widows every year. Wow. And only 100,000 widowers, so. Well, um, the one thing I picked up, don't try to copy someone else's method, but get up and get moving. Well, um, y you know, you can't lay out a plan for mm -hmm. someone to get through to their get journey. To get over grief, yeah. Uh, because each person has a different path, mm -hmm. a different level of grief and some get over it faster than others and um, you know you you just can't take that same path you so you can't sit down on rules this is what you do mm -hmm. this is what you do and this there are some people have written five five or six rules that you go through to get th over the grief but you, not everybody is the same you can't do that and and so what your book really tells and, and I wish I had the number, but there are, there are a lot of interviews in here and a very, very interesting of people that just said, well, this is what I did. And uh, well, one lady, it's not a how-to book. Right, no, but one lady, she, she laid out several uh, ways to get over her grief. I think I, um, I think there were like, she had like 10 ways yes, to get over I've got her it grief right here. because uh, I choose to live, I choose to cry. Yes, uh -huh. yes. I choose to live, I choose not to, cry. I choose to cry less. less. And because, um, you know, there is a real uh, problem with broken, a broken heart mm -hmm. is a real, uh, Mayo Clinic has decided that that's a real. It's something. a real issue. Yeah, it's a real mm -hmm. issue. A broken heart can Physical kill you. Issue, yes. And so, um, you know, you can get, I know that I was at that point where I, I was just crying all the time and so grieved. And I just thought, I, this is gonna kill me. This mm -hmm. is really gonna kill me. And then I read too, then about a broken heart, how mm -hmm. it can kill you. Mm -hmm. It is a real symptom. Um, here's some of the other things. Uh, I choose to remember the good things about my husband. Right. These are really good things. Yes. Uh, I choose to change my life even though it's painful. Right. All right. I will choose to be in the company of positive people. That's a good one. That's a very good one. Uh -huh. I choose to search for a creative space within me. Um, try new things. Right. You have to become a, a different person because when you lose a spouse, you lose part of you. Sometimes you lose your identity because mm -hmm. your whole identity was in your husband. You know, mm -hmm. you were... Uh, Mrs. Jones, the wife of Mr. Jones, and now, mm -hmm. now all of a sudden you're just Mrs. Jones, yeah, and Mary you don't Jones. have that identity anymore. To, yeah. and, uh, here's a good one. Um, I choose to make myself healthy again, because right. if people get up and get moving, it the, raises the endorphins in your brain, and you're going to have a lot better 
sense of right being. And, and then too, you know, if you are a caregiver during maybe your your husband's or your spouse's uh, illness, mm -hmm. you neglect yourself. You mm -hmm. neglect going to the doctor, the dentist, and neglect getting checkups like mm -hmm. you should. So, so when your spouse dies, mm -hmm. you know you're you're more apt to. There are more deaths. You know, I forget now what the percentage is. Sixty percent, a uh, couple months after their spouse dies, will die also mm -hmm. because of just not just the grief, but that they have not taken care of themselves. So. Uh, you list a couple in here who um, widows who didn't know much about the family finances. Exactly. Now, doesn't that add a whole other layer of? Well, I'm Grief, number one I here. I, you know, two weeks before my husband passed away, he he told me, he said, "Honey, I I hate, really hate to tell you this, but I made an investment, and I've lost everything. And I'm quiet for a little while. <laughs> and I said, "That's okay, honey. I'll be all right." And then I would go away and I'd cry a little bit because I knew what was coming, and so that was really hard. But but I my, think you said the right thing at that moment. No, I wanted, no he regrets. was the most important thing at that moment. But after he passed away, I realized I didn't know the passwords. I didn't know anything about the financial part of our marriage. So mm -hmm. I put in this book, the one thing you must do if you have not even lost your spouse yet, to make a list of, you know, your banks, Very all your valuable. passwords yeah. and all those things. That's a number one thing you must do. Yeah, and God bless you for doing that because... Mm -hmm. um, uh, your situation now is going to help other people. Well, I pray so. Yes. If you just join me, I'm talking to Bonnie Flood. Now, who's going to make my coffee? And this is, uh, I was so drawn to this book once I got in it because it interviews a lot of widows and widowers and kind of just tell their story, how they dealt with it. And you know, when you bring all these together, you can glean something from a lot of them. Because I, I, I do believe that people get stuck. They, they get stuck right there where that person died. Right, and you have to move on. You have to find your new self. I say I have to find a new me. Mm -hmm. And I have to start all over again, mm -hmm. you know? Now I handle the community calendar here at the uh, network and put events on from churches and ministries. And quite often we get a grief share, which is, uh, it's a program to help widows in the local church or whatever ministry. Are you familiar with that? Uh, with grief share? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I've talked about in the book also that more churches need to be, mm -hmm. make available to the widows, a widows group. And, and as I interviewed churches, you would be surprised at how many do not have a widow's group. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think that's really important. Yes, uh, if you're a widow, you might buy this book for your pastor. <laughs> right. Uh, it, would, it, it would be very insightful. Yeah. In the book of James, he talks about, you know, helping the widows and all. And I thought about that because in that day, the widow was completely, absolutely, totally dependent on her husband and right. often destitute. Um, today, women work, women are involved in everything, and I wonder if that need for help from Christians and churches uh, is obvious. Well, you know, the Lord, first of all, wants the family to take care of mm -hmm. the widow, you know, like the children or... Mm -hmm brothers, sisters, mm -hmm. or whoever, but they're so busy these days. The children are so busy with running that's the right. kids to f football and all this kind of thing. Uh, I said, that's why they made a home for mom, because the kids don't have time to take care of mom. Mm -hmm. So I said, um, you know, in here also that, that why don't they have a home for dad? You know, I never <laughs> see that advertised. They always say, you know, this is a home for mom. Mm -hmm. And um, because well, I asked a few people, why do you think there is, is a home for mom and not a home for dad? And they said, well, because mom's too busy. She wants to get in the kitchen and tell you how to run things and do all of this, you know. But dad, he just is content sitting there reading a book and mm. being very quiet.
so, but anyway, I, I did, think it's... Um, did you find that a certain percentage of them uh, wanted to kind of meet someone and there's all kinds of opportunities out there now? Well, the dating sites mm -hmm. are a, a big thing now, but um, I do have a few stories in there about the dating sites mm -hmm. and how I even tried that mm -hmm. uh, for a little while and how... I have some funny stories in there too. There are some really funny stories about dating and how these people who've been married for 40 years and all of a sudden they start dating and how it doesn't work and maybe it does. And <laughs> Sounds like a nightmare just, to me. <laughs> it, it, it was, some of them it was a nightmare, but there are some really funny stories. Uh, one, uh, one gal said she was going to meet this man at uh, Starbucks to have coffee, so she thought she'd go early and wait for him to come through the door. She had seen a picture of him. So he came in, but there was a young man with him and a young woman with him. And she thought, this is strange. And he came up to the table and he said, this is my daughter and this is my son. They've come to make sure that I'm okay, that I don't get into trouble. And she went, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm just here to have coffee. You Not know? interested. <laughs> Not interested. Yeah, I have about one minute left. Can you think of one thing in this book, and uh, can't really can't recommend it highly enough, that spoke to you personally? Well, as I wrote the book, it was healing for me. It was like journaling, and it was just so healing for me that I felt like when I finished that I had gone through uh, you know, some things mm -hmm. on my journey just by writing it down. But mm -hmm. but the most important thing is that I want to tell the women out there, you can make it. You know, when, when your husband dies, you think life is over, don't just sit there. Get up and mm -hmm. go do something. Volunteer or do something uh, to help in the community. Because when you're helping others, you're helping yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, just try to keep busy. I mean, I had to start all over again. I had to really start my art again to financially take care of myself but a lot of people don't have that so but go on with life mm -hmm. you know you're here god left you here for a reason that's that's a good place to yeah and again the name of the book is now who's going to make my coffee um i have a sense that male or female watching right now a lot of you have really identified with what she's had to say and she said, God's still got you here for a reason. Find out what it is and join me next time. Remembering, there's no higher right. calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.